Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I am confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. We've been connecting over the last couple of weeks and, and the Lord has really given us a mandate uh, for this season. Uh, and that's why we wanted to start this year off with this theme, more life. I believe that there's more life for you and I than what we have tapped into. And so what I want you to do right now is real briefly, if you could meet me in the book of 2 Corinthians, Apostle Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth. And if you could meet me in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, and if you could meet me at the fifth verse, I'm going to be reading out of the message version and it's just a couple of verses of scripture that will take us along the path of our theme for this afternoon. In 2 Corinthians, the, fifth, the second chapter, verse number five, 2 Corinthians, second chapter, verse number five. And it reads like this. Now, regarding the one who stated all this, the person in question who calls all this pain, I want you to know that I am not the one injured in this as much as, with a few exceptions, all of you. So I don't want to come down too hard. What the majority of you agree to as punishment is punishment enough. Now is the time to forgive this man and help him back on his feet. If all you do is pour on the guilt, you could very well drown him in it. My counsel now is to pour on the love. The focus of my letter wasn't on punishing the offender, but on getting you to take responsibility for the health of the church. So if you forgive him, I forgive him. But don't think I'm carrying around a list of personal grudges. The fact is that I'm joining in with your forgiveness as Christ is with us guiding us and after all we don't want to unwittingly give satan an opening for yet more mischief we're not oblivious to his sly ways our theme will come out of the seventh verse of this chapter and with that i want to talk to us all this afternoon with this thought in mind today i'd like to talk to us about being swallowed up I want to talk to us about being swallowed up. Uh, this is not a church hurt message by any means. Uh, actually, this afternoon, this is what I consider a hurt hurts message. What's a hurt hurts message? Uh, well, hurt hurts is when my hurt and pain and heaviness have gotten to a point where even my hurt now hurts me. My hurt is not working for me, but my hurt is hurting my progression in life. And, and for some of us, I feel the need to dress this because we're at a critical point in our life where if I don't deal with my hurt or my heaviness or my grief or my heaviness, then what can happen at this point in my life is I actually can shorten some of the good things that God has set aside for me. So I understand because, let's be honest, most of our hurt and heaviness has been used as a propeller or has been used as an accelerator as, or as inspiration to get us where we are now. And I just want to applaud you because you've used those sour grapes and you've turned it uh, into Chardonnay. You've used those sour grapes that life has thrown at you and, and you changed it and turned it into my favorite, Rosé. But I'm saying that from this point on, your hurt, your hurt is as far as you can carry it as a crutch. 
And from this point on, there has to be a conscious decision made that I'm either going to let the hurt go, either I'm going to divorce my heaviness, either I'm going to split or break up with my grief, or I, I'm just going to get as far as I've gotten. That's it. This is my crowning achievement in life is where I am. This is where the bus stops. This is where I top off at. So I like this here because I know that if I'm going to experience more life in 2022, then I got to make some decisions about how I'm going to deal with my heaviness. When I say hurt, when I say heaviness, they're, synony they're synonymous. They're one word in the same. Most of us, it's interesting, most of us have a pattern of treating our hurt and heaviness like piled up clothes or piled up laundry. Uh, for me, when I travel, I like to do laundry before I travel. Because when I get back, I don't want to get back to a pile of clothes. Most of us here, watch this, are, 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 are coming back, coming into a new season or a new, a new period of time in 2022. And, and I'm telling you that uh, I'm not going to prophesy that this is the year of prosperity. I'm not going to tell you that this is the year that you finally get the car of your dreams, the house of your dream, the life of your dreams. Matter of fact, I'm telling you with all confidence that 2022 has its own set of hurts, heaviness, and problems. But you can't go into the next season or the next year of your life with your old heaviness and problems and hurts piled up and still trying to carry them over. Uh-uh. Uh, you, you already got a new set of problems waiting for you by the time we get to January 16th of 2023. You will already have, 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 have experienced some 2022 disappointment. So let's stop bringing the 2021 hurt over. Let's deal with the 2020 heaviness. Let's deal with the 1985 letdown. Let's deal with the 1986 disappointment that we have left on tap let's clean up all the old hurt and not let it pile up like funky laundry y'all and bring it over into 2022 why I need a clean slate when I go into 2022 I don't still want to hold on to grudges I don't still want to hold on to messed up memories but I want to free myself up why because I believe that I'm at the point that I can actually conquer that which keeps hurting me so Paul makes sense in this chapter. Paul, you can relate to me, can't you? Yes, I can. Because in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse number one, Paul says, I want to come visit you, but I can't read your Bible. He says, I'm too heavy right now. He said, it was my wish to be with the saints in person. Don't you like being with the saints in person? He said, I want to go and be where y'all are at, but I'm too heavy of heart right now, so this letter will have to do. He said, I want to be there. Apostle Paul, God's bishop, save Paul, academia Paul, the educated Paul, the, the, the lawyer Paul says, I can't bring myself to the household of God because I'm dealing with too much hurt. Can't make it. It's going to take this email that I'm sitting by way of Timotheus. He starts the chapter off with the public announcement that I'm heavy, but watch what he says. Don't miss this part, Ryan. He says, I think it's best if I elect to stay back because I'm hurt and heavy, and I don't want to bring my hurt and heaviness around you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Paul. I, I thank you. I, I need to preach to some mature people right now. 
we sure appreciate you not dropping your laundry on us when I already got my own load of dirty laundry to deal with. I appreciate you isolating your hurt to just you and your house. I appreciate you not letting your hurt spread on me like the o Omarion variant. I appreciate you dealing with your own stuff and allowing me to deal with my own stuff. I appreciate that. But Paul also knows there's a remedy for those of us that have a heavy heart and that are dealing with hurt. What does he say? The next verse, Ryan, he says, I want to go because my joy is attached to being with you all when we're together. He knows the problem is, is that I'm heavy and I'm hurt. So I'm choosing to quarantine myself because I'm heavy and I'm hurt. But I understand, Paul says, that the cure for heaviness, come on now, and for hurt is for me to be around people. Come on now, y'all. The only way I can get over heaviness, the only way I can get over a broken heart is I got to make myself get around God's people. It says this, that I tried to deal with my unhappiness, my depression, my anger. I tried to deal with it by myself, but the truth of the matter is every time I try to deal with it, I keep finding myself digging a deeper hole. He says, my joy comes from being around you. So I have to address the one. If I want to be around you, the only way, Paul says, the only way that I can cure myself of hurt, he says, Essentially, if I'm going to get rid of the hurt, if I'm going to get rid of the heaviness, the only way to reconcile the hurt and heaviness that I have in my life is I got to confront the one that hurt me and made me heavy. And that's where we are today in our scripture. Can I give you context to the text? We're now here in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. And what went on was they just had a situation where they had to deal with a brother that had an incestuous relationship with somebody else in the church. The, the young man thought it was okay to hook up with his, with his father's concubine, which means the second wife, y'all. He says, you know, Paul says, no, that ain't going to fly around here. So now the whole church is angry because he embarrassed the church. The whole community is mad because he disrespected the community. Watch this. But he didn't have any remorse for what he did wrong. I'm preaching, but I'm not preaching legalism. The only thing that God wants is when you or I make a mistake, when you or I make an offense against the body, when you or I do something wrong, the only requirement that God has is for you to own it. Yeah, that's me. I was on one. Yeah, that was me. I was lonely. Yeah, that was me. I had a breakdown for a minute. Yeah, that was me. I was just tripping. You ever did something that said, you know what? I don't have no excuse. I did what I did. My bad. I was feeling myself in that moment. So I reached out to feel on somebody else. And so Paul, this is where we pick up our writing right here in the fifth verse. He says, enough is enough. He says, the young man has been outside of the community too long. Not ready yet, Roman. He said, enough is enough. Go get him. He said, the young man has been ostracized. His punishment fit his crime. Y'all stalled him out, but can I say this? Paul's talking. Y'all went a little bit too far. He says, some of y'all, I, I meant to teach this young man. We meant to groom him and to teach him how to, how to own his own mess. But some of y'all got some own ang your own anger issues to work out. And you took the ostracizing too far. Go get him and bring him back. I know he hurt me. I know he hurt you, but the only way to get through hurt and heaviness is you got to reconcile with the person that hurt you and made it heavy. I like this portion of scripture. I, I like the way Paul deals with this because even though the young man does something that's scandalous, even though the young man does something that's disgusting, even though the young man does something that's embarrassing, Paul says, go get him, which gives me this happiness. Nothing that you do is too disgusting or 
or too embarrassing that you shouldn't get the forgiveness of the saints or the love of God's people. Nothing you put in your body is so embarrassing or distasteful that you still shouldn't receive the love of God's people. Nobody who you got hooked up with is so disgusting or so embarrassing that you deserve to be cut off from the forgiveness of God's body, that you deserve to be cut off from God's love, that you deserve to be cut off from the house of God. It says, the boy did his time. Go get him. Go get him. Now I'm here because I'm happy to know that that no one's past is so dark and despicable that God's love can't reach him. And the truth of the matter is, when I look at my own life, I can understand and acknowledge that I got my ways too. And so I'm here, and it brings me now, Roman, we had halftime, to our key verse in 2 Corinthians, Didi, the second chapter, verse number 7. And it says, so that contrawise, you ought rather to forgive him and comfort him. Least perhaps, watch this, that such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. This is why most of us hurt, hurt, and have heaviness. It's because we have not dealt with the offender that hurt us. We haven't dealt with the problem that hurt us. We haven't dealt with the situation that left us heavy. But Paul says, we're going to move past that today. Go get him. Bring him back in. We're going to deal with the one that gave us the offense, but it's how we deal with the one that offended us. And this is part of, part of, this is part of the message where some are probably going to disagree with me. But that's why I'm glad I didn't make up these rules on forgiveness. I'm glad that I didn't make up these rules on reconciliation. I'm glad that I didn't make up these rules on how to bring people people back in because if you know me with you if you cross me one time it is what it is and we don't ever have to talk ever again but God's community is a little different than the Cephas community in God's community he tells you to go back in love on the one that offended you go back in love on the one that abused you go back in love the one that lied you on you go back in love the one that divorced you go back in love on the one that manipulated you why this him, Lord. He says, if we're going to get over hurt, hurt, if we're going to get over heaviness, you got to bring the person back in. So this is the problem because Paul understands that if we don't forgive the offender, if we don't forgive the person that hurt, hurt us, if we don't forgive the person that is the reason why I'm on meds for depression right now. Then, then, then he, Paul says this, if you don't forgive, you're going to, you run the risk of being swallowed up by your own hurt. And that's why I'm appealing to some of us today. Because this can't be the year that I let my hurt continue to run amok. This is not the year that I can let my vendetta go. This is not the year where I can let my anger against a person stay unresolved. Why? Because eventually, Paul says, if I don't deal with the hurt that the person, that the offender hurt me with, if I hurt, hold on to the hurt, eventually what happens is I'm swallowed up by that hurt ostracizing your offender, ignoring your offender's phone call, not accepting your offender's friend request. That doesn't hurt your offender at the end of the day, says Paul. Mm -mm. He says eventually it catches up with you. So I, I got to make this the year that I deal with the piled up dirty clothes in my life. I got to make this the year that I deal with the piled up hurt that I have in my life. Paul gives us some things to avoid. He says, when you're reconciling with the one that offends you, if you want to take care of the hurt so that you can avoid being swallowed up, he said, first of all, try not to get swallowed up by your own pride. Try not to get swallowed up 
by your own anger. Try not to get swallowed up by your own judgmental sarcasm. But make this the year that I'm dealing with what I need to deal with. The first thing that he tells us to do, he says, when you see the man, you must forgive. I like the Greek. I dabble in the Greek every now and then. I like the word for forgive right here. The word for forgive does not mean to, to forgive somebody by, by acknowledging that somebody said sorry to you and you said okay. That's not what the word forgive right here means in Greek. The word forgive in Greek as it pertains to this text means to rescue or pardon somebody. For some of us, the only way you're going to get over heaviness, the only way we're going to get over hurt is you actually have to go out into the world, find your offender and play Captain save a hole for him. You're going to have have to pardon your offender you're gonna have to rescue your offender you're gonna have to bring your offender back in that's true biblical forgiveness somebody say help me lord second thing that he says you have to do when you see the brother that offended us in order not to get swallowed up by your own hurt you're going to have to comfort him I like this right here. This, Paul, this is about the only thing that I can get with you on. When someone that's hurt you and left you heavy, the best way to deal with them is to comfort them. That word comfort means to keep them close. The best way to keep your eyes on somebody that hurt you, the best way to deal with somebody that, that deceived you and left you heavy, Paul says, keep that person close by. Keep a close eye on them. Keep them, invite them into your space. Make sure that you keep them near. After all, the closer they are to you, the less that, you, the less that they're doing in the background. The next thing that Paul says, and this is a problem that most of us are going to have with Paul's writing. As Paul says, commit your love to the offender. What do you mean, Paul? Commit my love. To the person that's broken my heart, to the person that's caused me hurt, to the person that offended me, Paul is asking me to go back and to reaffirm my love for that person. I don't know if I love him, Paul. Regardless, you need to go back and grant that person that's offended us affirmation. Like this word right here for affirm or love, agapeo, agape love. It says, I want you to go back to the person and, and, and essentially the word for commit yourself to the person or commit your love to the person. The word for commit means to control. I said, Paul, you got to work this so that I understand and, and I can let people at Epic know what you're talking about. And that's when the Lord began to speak to me and show me. That's just it when it comes to love. Most of us don't want to admit it, but we got to acknowledge it. Most of us can control who and how much we love. Well, I, I just, no. Paul says, I understand the science behind love. And most of us can control how much or who we love. And Paul says, put on your big boy pants and your big girl pants. And when you bring that offender back in, you need to show them as much love as you can. You need to reaffirm them and commit your love to them. Don't act like you can't do it, says Paul. Paul says you got control over how much love you can give someone. You can love someone that has hurt you. It's a matter of do I want to love someone that's hurt me. He said, do these things if you're going to get over hurt. Do these things that you don't get swallowed up. But here's the trivial thing, though, y'all. Here's the crazy thing about this scripture. You, you got a moment? Here's what messes me up about the text, Didi. In 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, Paul was the one that told them to put the offender out. Fast forward to our key text today in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. Paul says, now go get them. I, I said, I'm unclear, Paul, as to why you want to bring him back. 
Why are you asking us to bring back somebody that you kicked out? And that's when the Lord began to show me some things. I now understand and see the, 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 where Paul was writing from. He said, the reason why you have to go back and reconcile with the person that I threw out the church in the first place. The reason why you have to go back and reconcile with the person that I evicted out of God's community is first of all, I know I didn't have the right to evict them out of God's community. But second of all, Paul understands that when you divorce yourself from a soul, when you divorce yourself from a brethren, eventually you get to the place where your own hurt, heaviness, and grief swallow you up. And Paul's telling the rest of the Corinthian church, you don't want to go through what I go through. It's bad enough. It's so bad that I can't even come see you in person right now because my heart is heavy. You don't want no parts of this. You don't want to feel what I'm feeling you. I'm telling you, go get that boy and bring him back in. Why? Because I don't want you to get swallowed up by your own hurt like I am. So Paul makes these bold statements. Fourth quarter, Ryan, I'm almost done. He makes these statements. He says this, and I want you to watch this in the text. He says, whoever you forgive, I forgive. He says, whoever you just forgave, I will have already forgiven. And this tells me something. If you read between the lines right here, and this sounds like most of us, Didi, most of us indirectly hold on to grudges that belong in other people's feud. Anybody ever get caught up like that besides me? I hate your boyfriend, and I'm not even going with the person. I hate the friend that you mad at, and that ain't even my friend. We get caught up indirectly in feuds and grudges that have nothing to do with us. Anybody ever had a girlfriend or, or a family member that the person that they got us all to hate, they actually go back and reconcile with that person? But you said, wait a minute, I spent too much time, too much energy. I gave up too many dirty looks and death threats at this person just because you forgave them. I ain't ready to forgive them yet. Why? I didn't, I didn't exhort it or, or I've allocated too much time to hating this individual and Paul says I'm not going to do that with you because I understand Can I, I'm, I'm preaching right now prophetically but I'm preaching most of our hurt hurt and most of our heaviness has something to do with someone else's feud most of our hurt and heaviness has something to do with an offense that happened to somebody that's close to us but had nothing to do with us directly Paul says, no, whoever you forgive, I forgive. If you reconcile with them, I'll reconcile with them. If the victim and the offender are reconciling, then guess what? I'm going to get on board too. Somebody say amen. Next thing he says, and don't miss this important statement by Paul. He says, Jesus is in the audience. He says, as believers... I need you to understand that this is a test for us because anytime there's a situation that comes up where unforgiveness is present and somebody needs to be forgiven, Jesus stands there and looks at the offense between the victim and the offender and looks at us and says, well, what you going to do? He said, Paul said, don't, don't forget one of the main reasons you got to forgive the boy is because Jesus is watching. And this lets me know that as it pertains to how we deal with one another, Jesus is always watching. The, the last thing I want to bring up, and then after that we're done for this afternoon. He said, the one thing that I, I want you to make notice of, he says, take note, Church of Corinth. He says that whoever you forgive, I'll forgive. He says, Jesus the second statement, Jesus is in the audience. But the last thing that he wants to remind us of, he says that Satan is watching too. And what Satan likes to do, Paul's talking, y'all. He says Satan likes to use unforgiveness to his advantage. Thank you, Paul, for giving up game. 
Thank you, Paul, for giving up the enemy's playbook. Thank you, Paul, for allowing us to peek in the devil's files. He says anytime unforgiveness is present in our life, essentially we give Satan the green light to get involved in our business. We give Satan the green light to get involved in the situation. If we instruct, he says if we struggle to embrace this young man and we don't bring him back in God's community, then Satan is going to have a field day then satan is going to use this moment of unforgiveness he's going to exploit it and use it against us i'm done stand to your feet he says listen i know you think your offender is wrong i know you have reason to feel the heaviness that you do, but Cephas, you don't know how long it went on for. Cephas, you don't know how embarrassing the offense was. Cephas, you don't know how much money they stole from our family. You don't know what I had to do in order to get past the offender. You don't know what I had to do in order to lay there that night and play dead just so the offender would just leave me alone and I could run and go get help. You don't know what happened, Cephas. You're right. I'm not going to pretend that I know what happened. Because truth of the matter is, I got my own list of offenders that I need to work out and attempt or try to forgive. And I ain't saying it was going to happen overnight. But dang it, you let me work my list the way I need to work my list. And how about this? I'll let you work your lists the way you need to work your list. It'll all work out in the good, it, it, for the good in the end. But, but, but it lets me know that, 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 listen, as long as you're tethered to the offender, as long as there's heaviness and hurt hurt tethered to the offender, he says essentially this is what's going to happen. He says, essentially, you will get swallowed up by your own hurt and heaviness. This has nothing to do with the offender, but this is so we don't get swallowed up. In uh, law enforcement, most of you have seen this or heard about this due to recent events uh, dealing with social justice. Um, law enforcement, they'll tell you that... Uh, when they have someone that they're involved with in an altercation with, when it gets physical, y'all, the other officers looking on, it's their responsibility to look at their colleague and say, man, you're going a little bit too far. And they have a measure or, or a maneuver that when that colleague of theirs is going a little bit too far, okay, the person that you're choking right now, their lips are turning blue. They have a, a maneuver that's, that's taught to them from, from the early days of even the police academy. Is that you're supposed to go over to your colleague and tap them and say, that's good, I got them from here. It's your job not to let your colleague take it that far. Why? Because if they take it that far, someone could lose their life. I'm preaching to you right now. If they take it that far, they could lose their career. If they take it that far, it is a media nightmare. It's embarrassing for that organization. It says you, you, you owe it to your colleague that when things go too far, to step in and say, that's good enough. You're going too far. You need a break. You got to relieve them. That's what Apostle Paul is doing for us here today. He's saying the, the hurt that we have for the offender, the heaviness that we have for the situation. Some, some of us have hurt for offenders and heaviness for people that aren't even alive anymore. The altercation that happened, the situation ha that happened with that individual happened and, and that individual has been dead now for 20 years. And, and, and what Paul is coming to do is he's tapping out the church. He's saying, y'all, enough is enough. Let's relieve the offender. 
and we've got to start doing this to help one another. This is for you. It's not for them, Paul says. Why? Because you and I can't afford to get swallowed up with any more hurt, hurt, or heaviness. We got to make a decision. A am I going to commit to what I'm doing right now? Am I going to commit to this struggle, this internal struggle going on right now? Or am I going to tap out and let go? And, and that's what God wants us to do right now. He wants us to let go. He wants us to let go and he wants us to forgive. It's messed up because every time I have a message on forgiveness, something offensive happens to me that week. And I got to I got to practice what I preach. So it's, I feel like I'm setting myself up for something bad this weekend. It just it just happens like that. But we want you that are watching right now. We want you to get rid of the piled up hurt. And the piled up heaviness. Why? Because like I talked about earlier, 2022 has its own set of hurts and heaviness coming our way. Uh, 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 you need your laundry basket clean and clear for the incoming hurt and heaviness in 2022. Let's not let it pile up. Let's pray right now. Because one of the things that's going to help you get over that, that's going to give you the power to do that, is the Holy Ghost. God will give you the power. He's given you the power of an overcomer. And the first thing that we have to overcome is our fear of being right all the time. Excuse me, our fear of being wrong. And that's why we have to be right all the time. I'm glad that I don't have to do this on my own. I'm glad that I don't have to make stuff up along the way to figure out how I'm going to get in and out of situations. He says one way you're going to get out of a situation is, first of all, go on and die to me by being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, look, I'm going to show you how repentance works because I need you to repent, first of all. Repent and change your lifestyle. Repent and change your heart unto God. That needs to happen, and we can help you with those steps along the way by just reaching out to us and contacting us at myepicencounter at gmail.com or texting the word myepic, no spaces, myepic to the number 3199. Six. We'd like to continue this and show you how to not get swallowed up. And for some that feel like they, they're starting the new year off wrong financially, let me just give you this encouragement. Don't start off the new year in a deficit. Don't start off by being swallowed up by debt and bills. How are you doing that, Cephas? Look, I don't know how I'm able to give what I give. I don't know how I'm able to finance the kingdom like I do, but I just do it and I let God sort out the details. You can be a blessing right now by going ahead and leaving your worship, leaving your gift, being generous right now. And, and, and there are five ways that you can partner with us this afternoon. Givelify, Cash App, PayPal, our very own Epic Encounter app, and Venmo. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that we no longer have to be punked or persuaded by our emotions and our anger or our hurt, Lord Jesus. But Lord, you've given us the strength of an overcomer. You've given us the mind of Christ. That's a victorious lifestyle, a, vic a victorious mindset, Lord. And we thank you for your strength. We thank you for your love. We appreciate, Lord Jesus, your hand in our life, Lord. But I'm asking that you touch my heart right now, God. Touch my heart, Lord. I know that forgiveness is going to be painful, Lord, but comfort me through the forgiving process. Comfort me as I allow my offender to be released from my hands into your hands. I'll allow you to deal with it, Lord. For it says in the book of Romans, Lord, that vengeance is yours, not mine. Lord, bless my offender right now. Bless my offender right now, Lord Jesus. Help them so that they no longer have to hurt anyone else, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless my offender so that they can get over the hurt that somebody hurt them with, Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Hello. We want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. 
Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.